the one my means so I am five years old. Then from I will stick as on the twenty first of March. Please wear old socks to celebrate our birthday. Oh, what a cutie. I'm wearing my odd socks. This is as odd as they get, at least in my closet. Uh, you're wearing really creepy, weird socks. <laughs> That's your socks. Your, it's it's your socks. <laughs> I've got my MacWeldon.com socks on. Okay, stop, stop selling something. You do a commercial. Oh, MacWeldon.com, you go there. My gosh. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm assuming that your top story is going to be a Down Syndrome Awareness Day. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. And I actually have a, I have a good story on it. Okay, good. So. Uh, yes, uh, I'm kind of related to that. I mean, I, you know, we've been talking, it's, t- it's tightly related to the pro-life issue, as we've been talking about the past few weeks, and I wanted to talk about where that has gone in the Democrat Party. Okay. Mm. Pat? I'm going to talk about the erosion of our rights. Yeah. The discrimination and oppression of silicon-based women. <clears throat> <laughs> You uh, can't yeah. wait mm-hmm. for that. Yeah, huge story. It, that, you know what? I'm telling you, mark my words. Remember this. Write it down. This will be In it. 10 or 15 years, that will be a real deal. Yes, it will. <laughs> yes, it will. It will It will be. Okay. So tell us about it. Okay. So, um, you know, we've been talking about this for how many weeks now on, on Down Syndrome because they're trying to, you know, m- my, my daughter and uh, son were having a child, their first child, and they had the amniocentesis, and they said, we're waiting back to see if have Down syndrome or anything else. And I said, why'd you have that test? And they looked at me knowing exactly what dad was thinking. They were like, dad, we're not going to have an abortion. And I said, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to know. And they said, no, we just wanted to mentally prepare in case there's a problem. But knowing that the doctors could be wrong. Um, it's, a, it's a tough thing to do. And this, this, um, this test now is being used all over the world, worst in the Netherlands, uh, to to abort people who are different. If it, it's Down syndrome, well, what about homosexuals? Why don't we just abort homosexuals? Can we give them a test? Can we can we get an in utero test and let's get rid of? How about all liberals? You know, there are people. I've read it in the New York Times the last five years. You can tell the genetic makeup now. They say uh, between a conservative. I don't buy it for a second. Between a conservative and a liberal, really? Okay. Great. Why not we? Why don't we just eliminate the conservatives or the liberals? Or well, how about girls? Or girls. Yeah. And as we did a story last week, the New York Times, they are doing it. What did they call it? Do you remember? They call, it, was, it, was, it wasn't, hey, I'm killing my other twin. It was sing, uh, Singleton. Oh, Singleton. Yes. Yes. Singleton. Singleton. Um, and, you know. From twins to, to a Singleton. Mm-hmm. And you choose. I wanted this, this particular person, it was in the paper, wanted to have, I think it was a boy because they already had a girl or vice versa. It's wrong. Today, we had this wonderful, wonderful um, uh, person on from, that, had down, that has Down syndrome. She, has, she, she swam the English Channel. She swam uh, Lake Tahoe. What else did she... Uh, I mean, all these things that I'm not doing, and her life is somehow less valuable, less lived. I mean, I look like a slug compared to her. Well, and it's interesting because, uh, you know, doctors say things sometimes and they end up being wrong. So, or these test results could end up being inaccurate. You know, you get a test result and... She was told that um, she wouldn't feed herself or tie her own shoes. That's what they told her parents. She's she's, uh, she's swimming the English Channel. (laughs) That's obviously important. The test could be wrong and, and, you know, but like, is that important? Is that really vital to this conversation whether whether they're right about down syndrome or not doesn't mean you get to kill the thing right uh it's like this is like a weird line we have we just treat it as this like little throwaway item that you can kind of chuck away if it's not exactly what you want and it's and the reason why this is such a um such a bright line for me is if we cross this line there's no coming back from the darkness that we're going to enter because this, this, is, this is the hardest line to, to cross. These are children that we all see and adore. Okay? This, is like, this is like saying, hey, we're going to kill puppy dogs. That's not an easy chore to get the American people to say, yeah, we're going to kill all puppy dogs, all little cute little puppies. If we cross that line, we will be killing things beyond our wildest imagination at a record level. Here's the sad part. 
If you said you were going to kill, kill puppies or abort puppies before they were born, you'd have a lot more outrage, outrage. than we do now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Over a healthy baby, a Down syndrome baby, doesn't matter. The, pu- the outrage would be greater with a puppy. And standards change, right? I mean, and there was a time not all that long ago that people would have wanted to eliminate gay children, that they oh, would have absolutely. wanted to eliminate minorities, they would have wanted to eliminate women, right? Like, I mean, look at, look look at China, Sanger. they're doing it right now. They're, they're, they, they are getting rid of p- uh, babies depending on their sex. Yeah. Look, at, look at Kennedy's. The Kennedy's, what was his name, Joe? The, yeah, and the Rose. Drunk? Mm-hmm. Is Rose, and Rose? The, Do you know how that, that story is it's horrific. horrific. If you, it's he, he, t- he had a child who may have been Downs. I know that there was some sort of, in the day, uh, yeah, mental yeah. retardation. And he told everybody in the family, loved her, loved her. He was ashamed. So he sent everybody out on a trip. He took her to the doctor. They took the hook. Lobotomy. And lobotomized her. And when they came back home, he said, listen, I know none of you guys really had the guts to do it, but I took care of your sister. That's the genesis of Special Olympics. What do you say we stop it? And then they locked her away for 30 yeah. years. She yeah. couldn't even see her mom. And it you was... know why Down syndrome people are living now 30 years longer than they were 30 years ago? Not necessarily medicine, but because we're not locking them up. They have a will to live now. And they're working. I mean, yes. I, I see them all the time. And there's nothing new under the sun. There's always just slight variations. We've done this before. We just did it after they were born. Yes. Yeah. We're just trying to make that decision. Should we do it in utero no. now? And now we don't have to look at it. Right. Yeah. All right. Stu? And this is the, the you know, when you start moving these lines, you, you start having weird points like this. I mean, in reality, we can all, I think, say that uh, we should not be aborting Down syndrome children. However, we should really, we don't need that full sentence. We should not be aborting children, right? I mean, any life, whether it's desirable to you, whether you think it's going to be a burden, whether it's going to be happy or sad, probably not a good idea to just kill it because it doesn't seem uh, like you want it at that time. And, you know, there was a time in our society not that long ago where this wasn't solely this crazy conservative idea. Even, uh, you know, many Democrats um, ha- were believing uh, in, in pro-life causes, even though you might disagree with them on, on almost everything else. And, you know, that has really changed. I mean, we now see a really extremist party uh, on, on the left. I mean, look at this. So extreme. Look at this chart. This is pretty amazing. It's party of death. In the, in the House, anti-abortion uh, Democrats in the House, in 1978 there was 125 of them. That's an incredible number. Uh, you know, a couple of decades later, it dropped to 70. 2007, it dropped to 32. Now, three. And Dan Lipinski, if you see there on the tweet, uh, did wind up winning. So there are three left. Three pro-life Democrats in the entire House. I mean, that is... And they are being shamed. They're shamed. being driven out. Um, mm-hmm. What's this, The uh, head of the party wanted to kick them all out uh, and, and shame them. And, and this is one of their attempts. They tried to pick him off with a Bernie Sanders-esque... Uh, Democrat didn't work this time. Very close, however. It's so funny because we keep hearing how the Republicans are so extreme, the right oh, is so right. extreme. No, it shows it's not. The Republican Party is pretty divided. Well, it's it's also it's interesting that they've been able to use the narrative that they're the ones who care about our children. They're the ones who, yeah. you know, when it comes to school shootings, they're the ones who care about our children, but they don't. <laughs> not not some children. Not all children. Right. Not all children. It's it's. Um, you know, I had Steven Pinker on today and spent an hour with him. He is fascinating. You'll you listen to that hour, second hour of the radio show today. You'll feel so optimistic because he goes through the stats on how great things really are. They're really, really good. But we end the hour with there's got to be a way to come together and start talking and using critical thinking. We have to fix reason to her seat. Stop with the tribes. There is... There is, there's, a, there's a battle going on, a three-way battle, and that is the, um, um, the postmodernists that say there is no objective reality, there is no truth, um, all this gobbledygook, that versus the tribes versus the people who are in, starting to be in the Enlightenment. And they're the ones who are saying, hey, let's, let's just have a conversation about things and let's let facts speak. That's a very that's the losing end right now. That one has to beat the tribes and the postmodernists. Yeah. Uh, Pat, you mentioned the erosion of our rights. Yeah, when was it okay for schools to control what you do at home? When Never. when did that become Appar- a thing? Apparently, it is okay over now. the last five, six, yes. ten years. Yeah. It, that shouldn't be a thing. Yeah, uh, there was a group of boys in New Jersey who went to a 
a gun range, legally owned firearms, shot, you know, spent the afternoon on the range shooting targets, took a photograph of it and said, uh, fun day at the range. Put it on Snapchat. They got suspended for it by their school. Because the school has a zero tolerance policy of any students owning any weapons for any reason uh, inside or outside of the school. Unfortunately, they they are being sued. And they just the ACLU on it? It should be the ACLU. It's a gun club. And they didn't use school property to post it. Nothing like that. It had nothing to do with this. They did it on the. Okay, that's. Well, there's nothing to do with it. There's another. There's another. Outrageous. Boy who attends a school in the same school district who I read that the school officials demanded that he removed a window sticker of a gun from his pickup truck. That he drives Un- to school. It's unbelievable. Well, and he did it because window stickers they kill they, people too. Yeah, they threatened to <laughs> uh, I will tell you that uh, we were up at the ranch and we shoot, and I have uh, I have an extensive gun collection, and we like to shoot all of them, and my kids shoot them. Um, and I had a picture of the whole family with all the guns. You may have been there, mm-hmm. and I hesitated posting it, and I thought, oh, my kids and the guns and this. What the hell is wrong with you? Post. I mean, it's a constitutional right. Yes. You can't, you can't put yes. a photograph up on it? Yeah. Uh, come on. So to be clear, you have a cache of weapons? Is that right? You're stockpiling no, them? Okay. Rid of those? No, they were stolen. Yeah, I think. Yeah. You yeah. never really found out what I happened. Mind of the they're, military. Yeah, they're all gone. The, the budget the, cutbacks. You're talking uh, the weapons you know of what? war? I want to help out. The uh, weapons yeah. of war I gave to the war people. All right, I hesitate to even ask. That's shocking, Sarah. Sil- Being a Sil- woman, Sil- you should appreciate lives this. Matter why. A brothel in Paris that just has dolls, plastic silicone dolls. You come in, you pay their money. You pay your money, you spend some time with the silicone doll is being shut down, and people are outraged because um, it's rape culture. It's rape culture of the the plastic doll. Yes. Mm. Various people have spoken. Because you didn't get the permission of the doll. Yes, they didn't say yes every step of the way. Exactly. that's not what it is. It's not what it is. It's a little bit of that. It's a little bit of that. A little bit of that. Not (laughs) not all They say it's teaching rape culture. It's teaching rape culture. Um, they're, the big one is not the adult plastic dolls, but the children plastic dolls. They're trying to say to the to the Japanese who are making these robotic people, right? Don't make children because you are. And there's a Playing argument. Into pedophiles. Does the pedophile can he just enjoy that, or is that teaching the pedophile and giving? What the but see, this is what we're the going bro- to. The brothel, though, is specifically the three fully grown yeah, women. women, representative full, three fully grown women, but. A feminist in Paris was all about it and saying this is teaching rape culture, whatever I say. How dare you assume she doesn't want to work as a plastic silicone based? What do you think she needs to be in the kitchen? Maybe she won't. Right, that's what I'm saying. How dare you? I went to Sweden. I'm not kidding you. They have a shield. How long has Sweden been around? Look it up. How many hundreds of years has Sweden been around? The shield of the king and queen of Sweden, been there forever has two majestic lions holding the shield, okay? (laughs) Feminists got a hold of this, and I am not kidding you, look it up. They demanded, and and the state did it, they chiseled the nuts off of the lions. Okay? So if you look up on all of it, they took them off. I mean, somebody sat there with a chisel and took them off. What'd you do at work today, honey? (laughs) <laughs> this is a really great Same time to take a break. Know. We'll be back. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So crazy. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, oppressive.
Glenn, as we know, the uh, Austin bomber is now dead. What is your takeaway from this whole ordeal? Ding dong. <laughs> the witch is dead. Um, uh, here's a guy that, um, thank God, made a mistake of being caught on camera. He decided to change his M.O. If he wouldn't have, we still probably wouldn't have him in custody. Changed his M.O. He went into like a you know, FedEx store. It's like, hey, I want FedEx's package. If it's ticking, don't shake it too hard until I leave. <laughs> they went back. They saw him on the camera. They saw his car on the camera. They were, they went to his house to get him. He blew himself up. Yeah, I assumed good. this was going to be around 20 years. I thought he was just going to keep going. They weren't going to catch him. Because we've had a precedent with the right. Unabomber, the Mad Bomber. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, it's interesting is the Unabomber did last all that time. 17. And, and he was a, you know, uh, a uh, Berkeley professor uh, and just whacked out of his mind. This kid's 24. Yeah. 24. Mm-hmm. And they are warning that they're not sure if he mailed any other yeah. packages. So yeah. people should stay on the lookout for that. All right, Stu, a lot of people are talking about President Trump congratulating Putin on his victory in Russia, but there's some other things going on in Russia right now. Uh, Yeah, you know, Russia, it's an interesting place. Russia cares. Uh, (laughs) And I don't know if you guys know that. They care. About human rights. They care for you. Is that a hashtag? Russia cares? Russia cares. (laughs) Uh, I have a a bumper sticker on my car. It says Russia cares. Uh, And now they want to know that they don't want to offend people. They don't want to scare people. They don't want to intimidate people. Please tell me this ends with Putin putting his shirt back on. (laughs) Never. Okay. Never. Um, They don't want to intimidate people and and scare them. So what they're doing is they're making sure they're not going to tell you if they're going to harvest your organs uh, when you die. Wait. They're just going to, they're going to take them. They're not going to tell your family. They're not really going to ask permission. What they're going to do is if they need them, they're going to take them. And they just want to make sure that, they, you know that they're there for you, and they care. And uh, this is actually legitimately what they're doing, and I was proud to bring a, a, another organ harvesting story. For, I think I'm the only other person on the network who's been able to bring that to you. I know you're... <laughs> this, you. this is usually Good your you. beat. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, they... <laughs> but, <won't. I'm> <laughs> but, yeah, they actually yeah. legitimately are saying... They're acting as if this is some caring thing for the people. We don't want to scare you with the thoughts of your organs going away when you die. So... We'll just take them if we need them. And they, they actually said it is simply inhumane to ask family members about organ removal almost simultaneously with notification of the death. It's really of their thoughtful of them. It is. Well, really thoughtful. You know what? It, that's one thing that makes America different. Y- you are a human with certain rights. Your body is yours. Mm-hmm. Over there, they've never had that. They don't understand that. They, they, yeah. I bet they're probably not freaked out by this. They probably think that's the state's rights to do with my body, whatever. It's the Even state. What, 74% of the vote. Uh, so yeah. they're not looking for a big change, apparently. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it, you know. too scared to. <laughs> soon with Putin, the next step is, ah, we need your organs. I know you're still alive, <laughs> but. You're getting up there. <laughs> We're not going to scare you, though. We're just going to take them from you. <laughs> yeah. Take you downtown and take them. Yeah. Pat, climate change is real, and there are studies oh, and data man. to prove it. And Am I right? Y- w- no. <laughs> No, you're not. Um, it's. I mean, has there been warming? I, I don't know. I guess a little bit of warming. But the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, yes. NOAA, NOAA uh, yeah, since 1895, right has readjusted the data to the tune of two and a half degrees. So they have gone back. Not that it was warmer in 1943, but they've just gone back and they made it cooler in 1943 so that it looks warmer now and they've done this so many times now and they've adjusted so much of the data they don't know what's real that anymore. it's two and a half degrees wow. of whatever they're worried about it was 0.7 when this began yeah 0. 0.7 0. 0.9 something like that and now what it's is their justification what's their justification you know, for going back they, in 1940 they never and doing say and it's beyond 1940 it's to the 30s they make the 30s less hot and all the way through the 90s and into the 2000s. We didn't have the wind chill factor back then. That's probably what <laughs> yeah. Do you? Yeah. Well, and they, they, part of their, their excuse for that usually is that, uh, you know, they act, again, like they're not, there's no way to actually have a legitimate global temperature, right? How would you get that yeah. if you wanted to measure? You'd have to put them all over the place. There's not enough. There obviously have to be consistent. Consistent patterns. There's obviously, uh, they'd have to be over. You'd have to have uh, the same rules for every country. Exactly. And some of them are on oceans, top of roofs. Right? Some like, of them yeah, are in yeah. parking lots. But is that lots. their argument so, for adjusting so, it then? Yeah, so what they okay. do is uh, they adjust the temperatures all the time. I mean, you know, they, they, the, the global temperature is really a, a, a big scientific equation. It's not just averaging thermometers, right? 
So, but in the 1930s, they really didn't have this down. They had very little data to go by, so they've gone back and tried to recreate a lot of it. Um, and you know, at at some levels, it's we it's, don't know that that's accurate. No, we don't. And, and well, no way. So hang keep on, just new a second. Science and adjusting it, which yeah. is the, it's the inappropriate. Part. Hang on, just a second. Back in the 30s, I think they were still using mercury as a cure for herpes and syphilis. So, <laughs> yeah. yes. It does cure. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it just, it, you know, it, they've been playing with this data for a long time. For a they've long been time. caught many times doing it. Yeah. They usually are not held to task uh, to explain it at all. They just tell, they say, well, we've improved our methods. And because science is typically improving, you're supposed to just go along with it and never question it because when you question it, you're a science denier. It, it, it's an impossible, you know, when you are a scientist and you make all the rules as to what science is right and what science is wrong, well, it's impossible for anyone to ever question you. It's the exact opposite of the scientific method, which is supposed to constantly be questioned. If you unadjust the data, though, or deadjust or uh, misadjust How the data. How about return, yeah. it, to return it to its, to its original, original form? There's actually been slate cooling. Yeah. Slight cooling. Yeah, it's, ama- it's amazing. Uh, Doc, the half brother of the Parkland shooter was arrested. Just a bizarre story. Did you guys yes. talk yeah. about this or whatever? This is unconstitutional. <laughs> yeah. So uh, first, yeah, and I covered that angle too. Um, he visits his brother in jail, the Parkland murderer, and is overheard telling him things like, "Oh, you're so famous," yeah. and all these girls chi- are going to want girls going to want you yeah. and all this. Which side note doesn't matter if they want him because he can't get with them anyways. He's locked up. But. He then visits the school a couple of times, and they're like, get the hell out. You're not allowed here. He said he was just soaking up all of what happened. So obviously very creepy and weird. Maybe you watch him. But then they arrest him for trespassing, Mm -hmm. and bail is $750,000. Now, I think this kid is somebody we should watch, investigate. Let's make sure he's... But $750,000 on trespassing? Something pesky called... (laughs) What is that? Eighth Amendment. What is that? (laughs) Eighth... Amend- we only have four of them, though, right? Yeah, no, there's no, there's 27. Oh, interesting. Uh, but you can't do unreasonable bond on people. That's what here's I an idea. Can't. Why don't we get the community to um, uh, stop having their uh, sheriff deputies fall asleep? Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. You know, it would yeah. be nice. Well, they, be good. They've had all these security violations. Supposedly 700 kids didn't show up today because they're terrified of what the hell. They've got deputies falling asleep on their grounds and people bringing knives. I actually can't blame them for that. No, I can't I either. Home. Yeah. I can't either. All right, got to take a break. Stay with us. I mean, that's incredible. I'm glad you covered it that way, too, because I, yeah. I was wondering about the only one that caught that about the 750. I'm like, he's clearly the problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's hard to enforce the Constitution sometimes, but I'm... Our security. Every day we like to try to take your questions, so remember to tweet us using the hashtag TheBlazeWay. It hasn't been every day. It's been almost every day. I said we try to. Okay, that's Thank you. Okay. All right. No. <laughs> George try wants not. to know. Do. <laughs> George wants not. to know, Glenn, since you were a never-Trumper in 2016, would you now consider voting for him in, in 2020? Uh, I'd consider on his. Uh, I'd consider on his record so far. I want to see what he's doing. Um, that will be a very private vote. Should I do it? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not proud of him as my president because I think he sets a what very. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> It'll be a very private vote. You're I'm not going to announce it. I'm not going to endorse anyone. I'm not going to endorse it. I'm not going to. Oh my God! You should totally announce it if you're going to do it. That All right. Be a big story. Mm-hmm. We got to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you're a talk show host. What do you mean you're not going to tell people who you vote for? <laughs> 
It's a binary choice. Uh, yes, yeah. there's only two. Oh, no, it's Hi. Hi. Are you in a lot of pain? Me too. Uh, most, I mean, again, I think most people who were the founding of the country, they weren't brave. They wanted an end.